the most beautiful way of building relationships on LinkedIn, I think, are, you know, having conversations with people around, here's what I do. Who do you know? Right? Like just having a collaborative conversation with somebody that maybe has a similar audience to you, or maybe you feel that you can support each other. And now, you know, you're building these beautiful partnerships. It's just a much better energy than just this push, push, push energy. Welcome to today's episode of Influence by Design. I'm your host, Samantha Riley. And today we're going to talk about a social media platform, which I've got to be honest, I'm using, but I have shied away from a little bit post-COVID because I feel it's a bit spammy. So I think this will be a good conversation. I've invited Karen Yankovic to talk to us. She's host of the Good Girls Get Rich podcast. She's a LinkedIn evangelist and guides entrepreneurs to create wealth by combining smart business practices with simple, proven systems that develop and maintain strong customer relationships. She offers results-oriented and expert LinkedIn and PR marketing strategies that position her clients to bring in results. So I'm looking forward to this conversation today. Welcome to the show, Karen. I'm so happy to be here, Samantha. Thanks so much for having me. It's really great that we're chatting because you and I met extremely briefly. I think we'd been at a three-day conference and we literally met as we I was leaving the room on day three. I know, I know. And I, when, when we reconnected here, I was like, was that really her? Did she really come to New Jersey for that conference? From there, because for me, it was down the road for me. You know, I live in New Jersey, but yeah, I wish we had a chance to have spent more time. But you know, here we are, so we get to absolutely next year and get to know each other better here. Absolutely, and that was my very last trip before we all know what happened in the world. So I'm very much looking forward to getting on a plane and and heading back that way sometime soon. But today we're talking about LinkedIn, and as I mentioned, it's a platform that I have not been using as much recently. And I'm also, I've been training in LinkedIn since I think about 2012. And just in the last few years, I really have sort of pulled back from it and go, oh, it is so spammy. But I do want to get back there because I know it's the right place to be. So I'm looking forward to this conversation. Before we dive in, I'd love you to tell us a little bit about the kinds of people you work with and why LinkedIn is so important for them. Yeah. So the people that I work with are typically, I mean, they're, they're typically in some kind of transition. And I say that because a lot of them are coming from core, but especially post COVID, right? We've got that great resignation, great reshuffling, whatever we want to call it. So these are people that are experienced. They have a ton of expertise, but they might be new to whatever their new venture is, right? Mm. Um, so they're coming to this. They're not a brand new coach, but they're brand newly with the title coach. Right. Yeah. Um, or maybe they're just they've just been doing this a while and it's time to level it up. Right. It's time to level it up. They're at six figures. And I don't know about you, but I, I think we all know six figures is almost like the it's almost like having a noose around your neck. Right. Like when you're a, it's not like having a six figure paycheck. Right. So we want to get to at least a quarter of a million dollars or a million dollars a year so that we are we have. Yeah. So that there's a lot of abundance in our life, mm -hmm. which is really why I do my podcast. I feel like when we. When we do what we're good at and we spend some time there, that's when the abundance comes into our life. So, yeah. so, so that's pretty much my audience. And it's, you know, most of these are people that are be either entrepreneurs now or becoming entrepreneurs. They or they're entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we range anywhere from professional business professionals, like attorneys and CPAs to coaches and consultants to people that have left corporate and are now going out and want to be on boards of directors, you know, but it's typically somebody that's reinventing themselves a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And that is a lot of people. We recently had a three-part podcast series on transition and reinvention. So I know exactly, you know, those people that you're talking about. I feel like there's just so much change. People have come to realize that life's too short to do things that they don't enjoy so much. So there's a lot of transition going on. Can you talk to me about how the platform has shifted in the last few years. And I want to start here talking about the things that we don't want to see because I'm finding that LinkedIn is a cesspool of, hey, I've connected because I want you to buy my thing. And it is just message after message after message of that. And that is why I've sort of gone, oh, I don't like this energy. I don't want to be part You're of this. You're so not alone, which is why I love having this conversation. You're so not alone. But here's the thing, Samantha, if... 
we're only reactive on LinkedIn, that's what's, that is all that's going to be in our inbox, right? Because we're just mm -hmm. reactive. So I truly believe that LinkedIn should, can and should be our money tree in our business. It is where we build relationships with the kinds of people that can change our business and our lives and our bank accounts. And Samantha, I'm sure you've heard all the cliches, right? It's not what you know, it's who you know, or mm -hmm. you are the sum of the six people or the five people that surround you, like all those things. Yeah. We believe that to be true for the most part. And LinkedIn yeah. is where we meet those people, but we let the spam get in the way. Right. So I, I say like, ignore it. I mean, I don't even, accept, I mean, I would say if we were having this conversation three years ago, I would have been saying, you know, listen, I accept almost all connection requests because yes. as a digital creator, lots of people know me and I don't know them. I've got a podcast and everybody listen to my show, right? I don't, they don't, I don't need to know them to connect with them. Now I would say maybe half of the people that I get connection requests to, I don't accept because they pitch me on the connection request that I don't yeah, even yeah need to be connected to those kinds of people mm -hmm. right so i just so if we're tolling linkedin our money tree those are the weeds right so i just like mm -hmm. pull the weeds let them go and and focus on watering the money tree where's the opportunity who are the people i want to meet how do i want to show up how can i show up with with influence and credibility and as a thought leader mm -hmm. and how do i build relationships from that place one person at a time not a mm. hundred people a week yeah totally because you and I were having a conversation before we hit record that something that we've seen post pandemic is this human to human connection is so much more important to us all. And we're really yes. wanting to connect with our network. I've definitely seen it. I felt it. Now you were talking about us being reactive on LinkedIn. What I'm seeing, however, is when I reach out to people to have these one-on-one -on -one conversations, people are already being reactive from the other side because they're like, oh God, here's another one. Yeah. I want to just put, you know, put like call out the elephant in the room because I'm finding it a lot more difficult to say, hey, I really am different. I really do like yeah. to connect. Um, <laughs> can you talk to that? Yeah. So such a good question. There, you know, here's the thing. I believe firmly that there is absolutely never a reason to reach out to somebody cold. We talked about the fact that we met at a conference, right? So yeah, yeah. whether it's an in-person conference or it's a virtual conference, there's a whole list of speakers. There's a whole list of attendees, right? How many times have you gone to a conference and before you go to the conference, you look up the list of speakers and you're like, wow, I'm not connected to these people. And you connect with them beforehand and say, because we didn't do it right before the conference we met at. Is like, it, is so it? I see you're going to be speaking at Joe's conference. I can't wait to meet you there. I'm really looking forward to your talk. You're going to accept that connection request and you're going to accept that relationship. So take that same concept through other areas of your business. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I speak on LinkedIn. So we're just getting back. I am just getting back to the place where I'm doing more in-person talks, but over, but for the last, however many years I've been doing this, when I show up to conferences like that, I show up with gift cards to Dunkin' Donuts, which is a coffee shop in the U.S., and I give it to anybody that connected with me ahead of time on LinkedIn. That's so cool. I am never going to go broke giving out these gift cards because uh -huh. nobody connects. And I, this is what I teach, right? So, so thinking about it, like marketing is so much more intimate now. So thinking about it from that perspective, who else have you not connected to? I mean, Samantha, you've got a podcast. I've got a podcast. It's not like I wake up every morning with somebody connecting with me and says, I love your podcast. I can't wait to listen to more episode, you know, 15 about this was so good. I mean, do those kinds of things. Be mm -hmm. real, do, be, be authentic and genuinely reach out to these people. Now I would do it, obviously do it with some strategy, right? Like yeah. you don't need to connect with everyone, but maybe there's a podcast you'd like to be interviewed on. Right. Mm -hmm. I get pitches day in and day out from people I don't know. But if somebody connects with me on LinkedIn and tell and has a great profile so I can see how amazing they are and then tells me how much they like their podcast, that's a great way to take the first step towards maybe being a guest on my show. Right. So, mm -hmm. so it's really about being more authentic and looking for the warm ways you can connect with people. You can take that same concept of who's the speaker at the conference to who are in the Facebook groups or the LinkedIn groups that you're in. And and by the way, that's a little a little on the spammy side for me. But maybe, maybe it's the people that run the group. You can reach out to them and say, you know, who I love your group and I wanted to connect with you. You do such a good job running it. 
Maybe you're a member of a woman in business conference or a chamber of commerce or something like that. Go through the directory, pick a few people and people that you genuinely want to get to know and, and be genuine about it, right? If there's <laughs> articles that were written and you like the article, don't just share the article, connect with the person that wrote the article and tell them how much you loved it and that you shared it and start to build actual relationships with people. It seems like it takes more time, but to be honest, it's so much less time than spamming people and having to weed through all the craziness of messaging with people that you don't even know. Yeah, totally. You're talking about time there, but I think there's something else that you can't see and that's the energy behind what you're doing. And I believe that that energy, it, it doesn't matter about the time. I actually am more interested in making sure that I've got really good energy in my business you know, I, that I mentioned right at the beginning that, the you know, LinkedIn's this cesspool and it's all about me balancing my energy because when I'm feeling great and I love connecting with people, then that comes through. People can't see it, but they can feel it even if they don't know what it is. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And, you know, I had a, I had somebody that came to me recently and I knew their boss. I've worked with their boss in the past and I know he's a very personable guy. And they came to me and said, you know, we're using this tool and, and we're connecting with all these people and I'm driving all these leads to him and he hasn't closed. I'm, I'm sending him great leads and he hasn't closed any. And I was like, well, first of all, how great are those leads? If he hasn't closed mm -hmm. any, I know your boss, I know how personal a boy is, but if there was 50 of those, do you need to tell me he had 50 conversations with people that he didn't close? Who's got time? I don't have time for that. Right. Mm. So even though it seems sexy to spin a tool and get all these appointments on your calendar, in reality, it is such a time drain and an energy drain. I would much rather take the time to do a little bit of research and just connect with people I actually want to build relationships with. And by the way, when you do that, it's not necessarily just people that, you know, like, here's who I am, give me your credit card. The most beautiful way of building relationships on LinkedIn, I think, are, you know, having conversations with people around, here's what I do, who do you know? Right? Mm -hmm. Like just having a collaborative conversation with somebody that maybe has a similar audience to you, or maybe you feel that you can support each other. And now, you know, you're building these beautiful partnerships. And now those conversations are, hey, I'm reaching out because Samantha told me to reach out to you or Samantha sent you my way, right? And it's just a much better energy than just this push, push, push energy. Yeah, totally. It, we're over it. it do, you know, you mentioned before, marketing has shifted. It's very, very different now. It's... I believe the way it should have always been. And it's nice to see that it has shifted in this way. Well, but you know, here's the thing, Samantha. I also think this is kind of timeless because this is how we were marketing 20 years ago, right? Correct. We were marketing relationship marketing. And then the internet came out and we had all these beautiful tools and which we still have, which are still amazing in their own ways. But at the end of the day, the biggest contracts are happening with people you talk to and that's happening on LinkedIn. You want to yeah. sell a pet? Go to go on Instagram. You want to get a distributor that wants to buy a hundred thousand of your pens? Go on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. There, you heard it right here. Now, just before we hit record, you were mentioning that you're using AI a little bit and tinkering in LinkedIn. I'd love to know how you're using it because I've been having a little bit of a tinker as well. So it'd be interesting to see if we've been doing something similar. Yeah, well, you know what? I mean, I'm just using it wherever I can think about using it. Like, for example, mm -hmm. we have a new program out. We just released a new LinkedIn profile training program. And in that program, we talk about finding keywords, right? Like we want to use, you want to use keywords in your LinkedIn profile so that people can find you. If somebody's searching for something that you do, you want to come up. But we get stuck, or I get stuck on the what words should I use, right? Mm -hmm. So I actually have got it up on my screen right here. I just did a, I just did a search that just said, what words are people using to search LinkedIn for keynote speakers. And it came uh -huh. back and said, although I cannot provide real-time data, blah, 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 when searching for keynote speakers on LinkedIn, people might use the following terms and listed 19 amazing terms that can be used, right? Mm. Now, I would probably, you're not gonna use all 19 in your profile, but you might look at some of these things, but then it went on to say, which is where this is so brilliant, to refine their search, users might also include the topic or industry they're interested in, such as a FinTech keynote speaker, right? So. So things like that to just get out of your brain, right? To get mm -hmm. out of your, get out of being stuck. 
So things, you know, so for things like that, as you're creating your profile, you can even like one of the things that I asked a chat GPT was who is Karen Yankovic? And it came out with this beautiful bio for me that I absolutely could have written probably better than I would have written. And now I can just edit it, but you can do that. I don't know if it depends on how visible you are, right? But I don't know what will come up, but now you can take that as the basis for starting to write your profile, right? Yeah. You know, if you are a, we talked about using LinkedIn to connect with journalists, right? Or podcast hosts. If your audience is, you know, women in fintech, you can ask AI, who are the top 20 podcast hosts of women in fintech? And now you've got a list of 20 people that you can connect with warmly because now you can listen to their show. Even if you just read the show notes, right? Let's get real. We here not time to always listen, right? But now you can connect with them in this warm way and start to build relationships with these podcast hosts that you may want to be on, right? So those are just a few ways. And that just saves time. Yeah. And at the end of the day, the, pro the, the strategies that I teach on LinkedIn are really very, uh, they need to be done. A lot of it needs to be done by you, the, the you know, the business owner, the CEO, you know, the, the person who's on LinkedIn. We can't be, you know, we can't pawn a lot of this off to our VAs because LinkedIn doesn't even want our VAs to ever even log in as us, right? And and frankly, we think we're talking to the person we think we're talking to on LinkedIn. And if we're not, that it's it's not like Twitter or Instagram where I mean, it doesn't matter if it's you or not. It matters if it's you on LinkedIn. So anywhere we can save some time, just allow, it just frees us up to do more of what we love to do. So I could just bang with it for now, but um, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun to incorporate into the work that I'm currently doing. And I can't wait to see what's ahead where other things I haven't found yet. Oh, I can give you a new, another one. So oh, I, please, please, I want to hear it. I love leaving recommendations for people because like you were saying, I think it's a really great way to build or to to add another layer to a relationship that you already mm -hmm. have. Um, yep. So what I do is I copy people's profile about sections, throw it into chat GPT and say, please write a recommendation for this person. And it spits oh my gosh. it out. And can within I 30 that? seconds. Can I, oh, can I borrow that? Hey, oh no, my gosh, I, I love I that so I borrowed much. that. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> go so for it. Because yeah. the recommendation comes out sometimes, you know, you just need a couple of little tweaks. But, you know, between 30 seconds and 60 seconds, you've got a recommendation. And that is my favorite way to use it on LinkedIn because recommendations used to take me so long to write. <laughs> okay. well, and you know what? Here's the thing. I have such a commitment to writing more recommendations and I don't do it because I look at it and then I get kind of stuck, right? So, uh -huh. oh my gosh, this is going to blow up my recommendation writing. And this is a great tip. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no, it's such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. So... You've mentioned how you reach out and connect with people and sort of start that conversation, but we really are talking about building these relationships. How do you use LinkedIn to add the next layer of relationship building? Yeah. So here's the thing. You mentioned that you, you know, when you go in your inbox, it's just full of people spamming you, right? Mm -hmm. My LinkedIn inbox is probably the most valuable piece of real estate in my business because that is where all the business is happening. So it's not about, I don't connect with anybody that I don't have the intention to to try to get on the phone with, right? Mm -hmm. So so it's actually building true relationships. So I have a, you know, a business, a marketing plan, let's call it a marketing plan of how many podcasts I want to be interviewed on, how many JVs I want to do, you know, things that I've got in my thing. Well, then I, I look at my marketing plan and then I look at, and I look at LinkedIn and I'm like, okay, I need to fill in some spots. Or if I look at my calendar and I don't see any calls on my calendar, I'm like, all right, I got to get back to LinkedIn. So my goal truly is to have calls with people, actual calls with people. But I will give you a, a little, I sounds like a pretty good tip, a little, a really good tip. So, well, you know, so many people, like you mentioned, you know, you reach out to people and they're like, uh, I don't know, what do you want from me? Right. So, so many of us entrepreneurs and podcast hosts and people that are on, on online business world, we're building an email list, right? One of the things that I do routinely, and it's shifted a little bit how I build my email list, is I will go, I'll ask my assistant to print me a list of everyone that opened the last five emails that I sent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I come over, I take that list and I come over to LinkedIn and I can't always find them because if you signed up for my email list with, you know, Karen at gmail.com. I don't uh -huh. know who you are. So I ask for first and last names now on all of my things so that I can have a better job, job of finding them. 
But I literally come back over to LinkedIn and I say, if I can find, let's say there's, you know, 50 names and I take those 50 and I can find 25 of them. Or I ask my assistant to do that. Like, can you find them on LinkedIn and send them to me? Now I go in and I say, you know, hey, Mary, you know, I noticed that you registered from your, that you, that you subscribed to my emails. And I really walk the walk when I say I want to build relationships with people. I want to, you know, so much more about me than I know about you. And I want to know more about you. So, you know, I'd love to connect with you here on LinkedIn and learn more about you and maybe grab a quick phone call or something. These are people, these are warm leads. They already have expressed interest in what you do. They're on your email list, right? Now by reaching out, remember I talked about that intimate relationship, that personalized Mm -hmm. marketing. So now you're taking a resource that you've worked so hard to build and you're just leveraging it. You're going deeper, not wider, right? Mm -hmm. So the numbers don't matter as much. You know, it doesn't matter if you have a million people on your email list. What matters is the people that are on your email list, what are you doing with them? Is there a way to go deeper with them? And this is one of those ways. So we do now ask for first and last names on our our subscriptions because it makes it easier for us to find these people. I probably could ask for their LinkedIn URL, but I kind of like to surprise them with that message. Just saying, you know, and I, you know, I could go to people that haven't opened them. I mean, I just... I don't want anybody to do anything times 50. I want you to do this times five. So that you're mm-hmm. actually following up with people, right? The more micro targeted you are, the more likely you are to follow up with these people. So these are some of the like deeper dive strategies that, you know, build your business full of people that are, you know, of, of raving fans for one thing, because they really feel like you truly do want to be a part of them and it's free. You know, we're not even, you don't even have to pay for a stamp to mail them a card. Yeah. Love that so much. You just mentioned following up with the people that have opened your emails because that's times five as opposed to times 50. And I wanted to just really go back and highlight that because what I've noticed from having a seven figure business as opposed to a six figure business is that it's actually easier to have a seven figure business because we're really honing in on what works. So yeah. I just wanted to say like, that was a piece of gold right there. We're trying to simplify business and pay attention to where we're going to get the biggest results and leave the rest behind. Right. And that's what I mean by I said, I don't really care about the numbers. Mm. I care about yeah. the, yeah. what I'm doing with the numbers that I have. And am I, am I really, truly, am I genuinely you know, provide, serving these people that have asked to be served by me. Mm-hmm. Love that Instead of so chasing much. the next one. Oh, wait, instead of always chasing the next one, right? Yeah. Well, it goes back to that, that energy that we were talking about earlier. So, you know, what is the energy that you want to be creating in your business? And, you know, when we're in a place of abundance, you know, that's what is mirrored back to us by all of the relationships and the, and the you know, interactions that we're having with the world. I love that. I love that. Now, you mentioned before that you have a masterclass for people that want to dive deeper into LinkedIn. Can you share a little bit about yeah. so, what's you know, in I, Listen, I I love when people connect with me via my podcast or via you know things like this where they can get a sense of if my energy is aligned with their energy, right? But beyond that, there's a lot of different ways to do this. There's a lot of right ways to to do LinkedIn strategy. There's a lot of wrong ways, but there's also a mm-hmm. few right ways. So I, before we dive deeper with people, and I don't want to waste their time or my time, we provided this masterclass that just dives a little bit deeper into these strategies. We talk a little bit about what the strategies are, how we use these strategies. There's a lot on the PR piece because I think that, you know, especially people in transition, some of these people are coming from corporate with so much expertise, but they feel like they have imposter syndrome because it's their the yeah. brand new title, right? Mm-hmm. So the mm-hmm. PR piece, if they're interviewed on podcasts or in the news or on TV, it gives them the credibility while they're building their base of business up, right? So I really like the PR piece. I think we overlook how much journalists need us as experts in the world. And 100%. so I talk a lot about that and just what the strategies are. We're not selling anything on the masterclass. It's just, a, we just kind of lay out the strategies and if it feels aligned, you know, we offer an opportunity to jump on a call to see if, you know, to see if we think there's a fit to, to have more, a further conversation. It's all, I, I'm a firm believer and I only want the exact right people to be working with me. And I think that goes both ways, which is why I love 
attracting people in this way. They can get a feel for my energy right here, right now. I talk 100 miles an hour. I'm from New Jersey. Some people like that. Some people don't. Let's find that out up front, right? So the Masterfest gives us another way to do that, but it also gives us a ton of great information in that Masterclass that you can implement whether or not you want to take the next step to book a call. Yeah. And where do people go to register for that? You can go to karenyankovich.com slash masterclass, or if you just go to karenyankovich.com, it's all over the website. And of course, as always, we'll put the link in the show notes over at influencedbydesignpodcast.com. Karen, you mentioned PR just then. I'd love you to give us one little tip of how we can use LinkedIn to potentially get publicity. Yeah. So I'll give you a story, uh, a, a client story. I have mm-hmm. a client who's a real estate agent in the U.S. in on the West Coast, and my client saw an article written on NBC about real estate. And instead of just sharing the article, shared the article, starting out with the Great Leeching profile, though, let's get real. All of these strategies only work really well when you have a great profile, so great profile, so connected with the writer and shared the article, just was providing value, said this article by at some so-and-so. Um, loved this, this, and this, and then connected with the writer, messaged the writer and said, just want to make sure you saw that I shared this all over the place. I love your work. There, of course, the writer was very grateful for that. I mean, it doesn't happen as often as you think, even to the people like Katie Couric, right? Like it's not happening as often as you think where people are just not taking the time to do this. So a week later, she reached back out to my client and said, I'm writing a story about housing prices. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Well, it turned into a full page article on NBCnews.com about housing prices and seen by 65 million people, right? Which, listen, right there, you're not going to probably get a lot of business from that as much as it sounds cool, but here's sure. where this helps. When there's a, a a listing, a point, when there's a house that's for sale, right? And there's competition and you go out and you can drop that thing that says, when I was NBC News as housing price specialist, you don't lose business, right? No. That's when you, it gives you that credibility, but it came, it wasn't hitching. They weren't creating these big long, they didn't hire a $10,000 a month PR firm. What they basically did was just do exactly what we talked about on this whole show, connected authentically, was provided value, shared their article and, you know, showed up looking worthy of their time. And now, you know, has this piece of publicity that you can't beat. I mean, we've had people on The View, we've had people in like all, I mean, I can't even tell you so many different publications from this strategy just genuinely building relationships with the actual journalists Mm. i love it so much it's just so refreshing to hear nice ways to connect with people without being spammy karen it's been an absolute pleasure to chat with you if you're listening definitely get on karen's masterclass but also go and listen to her good girls get rich podcast i was actually listening to quite a few episodes yesterday i always prepare for these but I was just like, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. And I started flicking <laughs> through. So definitely go and take a listen. Karen, thank you so much for being on the show. I so appreciate you. Oh, thanks for having me, Samantha. It was so great to be here.